Nestled in the heart of Southeast Asia, a persistent territorial discord has brewed between neighboring nations, Singapore and Malaysia, revolving around a small island that has become the focal point of their contention. The source of tension between the two nations is none other than Pedra Branca. The issue escalated to such an extent that both nations deemed it necessary to address the matter on the global stage, opting to bring their disagreement over Pedra Branca to the International Court of Justice. The question looms, who emerged victorious in this struggle over an unassuming island? And what are the broader implications for the region? Join us as we delve into the twists and turns of this maritime saga and uncover the aftermath of the court's decisive ruling. Pedra Branca, situated in the Straits of Singapore, might appear insignificant to the untrained eye, yet it carries a rich history dating back to ancient times. Positioned approximately 24 nautical miles east of mainland Singapore, this island, along with Middle Rocks and South Ledge, hosts the Horsburg Lighthouse, erected in 1851 during British rule. Composed of a reef of light grey granite, adorned with coral encrustations beneath the sea level, Pedra Branca stands as a distinctive geological feature. The significance of Pedra Branca lies in its strategic position at the eastern entrance of the Singapore Strait, providing control and monitoring capabilities over maritime shipping in this crucial passage. After the separation of Singapore from Malaysia in 1965, complexities arose over Pedra Branca's sovereignty. The territorial dispute was sparked when Malaysia published a map in 1979 which placed Pedra Branca in its territorial waters. Singapore rebuffed this claim on February 14, 1980, through a diplomatic note to Malaysia urging correction of the information. Subsequent bilateral negotiations, which included the Middle Rocks and South Ledge in the territorial debate, failed to yield a resolution. Both nations then opted to sign a special agreement on February 6, 2003, initiating a legal settlement of the sovereignty dispute through the International Court of Justice on July 24, 2003. The recourse to an international court underscores the acknowledgement that direct negotiations between Singapore and Malaysia had hit an impasse. This legal avenue holds the potential for an equitable and unbiased judgment, offering a prospective resolution to the enduring territorial dispute. Singapore and Malaysia jointly recognize the necessity of an objective, third-party assessment in determining the rightful sovereignty of Pedra Branca, Middle Rocks, and South Ledge. In the courtroom, Singapore argued that Pedra Branca should be deemed terra nullius, a Latin term denoting land belonging to no one. This legal concept, validating a state's claim based on occupation, drew parallels to historical colonial practices where undiscovered lands were claimed as terra nullius. Singapore contended that, in the post-colonial era, it actively asserted sovereignty over the island. In contrast, Singapore argued that Malaysia had not exerted a comparable level of control and had maintained silence for over 130 years, since 1847, regarding Singapore's authority over Pedra Branca. In asserting its sovereignty over Pedra Branca, Singapore faced no opposition from other nations and made these declarations unilaterally without seeking endorsement from any external state. The foundation-laying ceremony for the Horsburg Lighthouse on May 24, 1850, notably described Pedra Branca as a dependency of Singapore. Despite being widely reported in local newspapers, this designation elicited no response from Johor authorities. Singapore's demonstration of control extended to activities such as investigating shipwrecks, regulating visits to the island and flying the British and Singapore flags from Horsburg Lighthouse. Interestingly, Singapore complied with Malaysia's flag removal request from Pulau Pisang in 1968, an island under Malaysian control, yet no similar request was made for Pedra Branca, implying Malaysia's lack of sovereignty assertion over it. These actions were spotlighted during the court hearing, underscoring Singapore's consistent administration compared to Malaysia's apparent inactivity in the region, suggesting that Malaysia's silence implied non-consideration of Pedra Branca as its territory. The Singaporean legal team buttressed its case with a range of historical documents, cartographical records, and meteorological studies, including a pivotal 1953 letter exchange between J.D. Hyam and M. Seth Said. 
This correspondence suggested that Johar officials did not view Pedra Branca as Malaysian territory, serving as compelling evidence in Singapore's favor. Contrary to Singapore's narrative, Malaysia maintained its long-standing original ownership claim over Pedra Branca, arguing that the islands in the Singapore Strait were part of the Sultanate of Johor before 1824. Malaysia presented historical records indicating consistent British recognition of the Sultanate's sovereignty, reinforcing their claim. In response to Singapore's terra nullius argument, Malaysia asserted that this principle did not apply to Pedra Branca, citing historical use by Malays under Johor's rule, particularly for activities like fishing. They also presented evidence of the English East India Company seeking permission from the Sultan and Temenggung of Johor to construct the Horsburg Lighthouse. Claiming this historical usage establishes their original ownership and consequently sovereignty over Pedra Branca. Malaysia produced a map from 1824 that depicted the island under the Sultanate of Johor's ownership, spanning parts of the Malay Peninsula, Singapore, Sumatra, Borneo, and the islands in the strait. This map was pivotal in Malaysia's argument, asserting their status as the original title holder to Pedra Branca. Additionally, they presented a 1924 map crafted by the Surveyor General of the Federated Malay States and the Straits Settlements highlighting the absence of Pedra Branca, Middle Rocks, or South Ledge from both the main maps and additional inserts, implying non-recognition of these islands as dependencies of Singapore. Malaysia also pointed to a 1925 colonial map where the Strait Settlements were highlighted in red and Pedra Branca lacked the same shading, suggesting its exclusion from the recognized Singaporean islands. Further supporting their case, Malaysia presented a 1926 map crafted by the Johor Sultan Ibrahim, placing Pedra Branca under the part of Kota Tinggi district Johore, aligning it with Johor rather than Singapore. Another crucial element of Malaysia's argument was that the British, with explicit permission from Johor, constructed a lighthouse on Pedra Branca, signifying acknowledgement of Johor's sovereignty over the island. Malaysia cited Governor Butterworth's November 1844 letters to the Sultan and Temenggung of Johor as evidence. Malaysia requested copies of these letters from Singapore, suspecting they might be in Singapore's archives under Letters to Native Rulers. However, Singapore never responded. Singapore countered by stating it lacked copies of the letters, its archives were incomplete, and searches elsewhere had been unsuccessful. Singapore argued that the letters were likely in Malaysia's possession since the governor had sent them to the Johor rulers. In response to Malaysia's insinuation that Singapore concealed the letters, then Deputy Prime Minister S. Jayakumar expressed disappointment, categorizing the claim as unfounded and distracting. Remarkably, Malaysia didn't pursue this matter further in its subsequent rebuttal in court. So who eventually won tug-of-war for Pedra Branca? The culmination of this prolonged legal battle arrived in 2008, nearly three decades after the dispute's inception, when the International Court of Justice ruled in favor of Singapore's sovereignty over Pedra Branca. The decision stemmed from a comprehensive examination of historical evidence and legal principles. Firstly, the court considered the historical context, emphasizing the Sultan of Johor's original title to Pedra Branca and the surrounding islands in the Straits of Singapore. The court acknowledged that the Sultan had authoritative control, supported by the Orang Laut community, engaged in activities within the Straits. This historical backdrop, dating back to 1844, formed the foundation of Johor's claim. However, Singapore effectively countered this historical claim by presenting evidence of its subsequent and uncontested acts of sovereignty over Pedra Branca. The court recognized a transition of sovereignty to Singapore by 1980, attributed to its sustained and unopposed administration, coupled with the absence of competing claims or exercises of sovereignty by Malaysia during this period. These acts, spanning a significant period, played a pivotal role in establishing Singapore's effective control and authority over the island. Furthermore, Singapore produced official documents from Malaysian authorities affirming its sovereignty over Pedra Branca, bolstering its case. Despite this, the court ruled that Singapore's sovereignty over Pedra Branca did not extend to Middle Rocks. Since Johor held the original ancient title to Middle Rocks, 
the court decided that ownership remained with Malaysia as the successor to the Johor Sultanate. Regarding South Ledge, it fell within the overlapping territorial waters of Malaysia's mainland, Pedra Branca, and Middle Rocks. Since the court lacked the jurisdiction to delineate the specific boundaries of territorial waters between the two nations in that region, it declared that South Ledge pertained to the state within whose territorial waters it resided. The court's decision initially seemed to bring an end to the long-standing dispute, with both Singapore and Malaysia publicly accepting and committing to abide by the ruling. However, a series of unexpected events unfolded. In 2017, Malaysia submitted a revision application for the Pedra Branca judgment, citing three documents found in the UK's National Archive. These papers suggested that officials at high levels in the British colonial and Singaporean administration recognized Pedra Branca didn't belong to Singapore during a crucial period. Malaysia argued that if the court had known this earlier, the judgment might have differed. Malaysia also separately requested for the court to interpret its 2008 Pedra Branca judgment on the basis that there had been an impasse in the Joint Technical Committee with Singapore since November 2013. Malaysia emphasized that an interpretation was vital for maintaining peaceful relations, especially in managing maritime zones and airspace between the two nations in the future. Curiously, the timing of Malaysia's requests coincided with its upcoming elections in 2018. The ruling Barisan National Coalition, led by then Prime Minister Najib Razak, was facing pressure due to the 1MDB scandal. Speculation suggested that leveraging a renewed legal challenge over Pedra Branca could showcase the coalition's foreign policy prowess and underscore its dedication to preserving Malaysia's sovereignty, possibly influencing voters. So what was Singapore's response to this sudden turn of events? The city-state was clear that the court's ruling on Pedra Branca is final and cannot be disputed. Strong arguments were presented to counter Malaysia's submissions, asserting that the documents Malaysia relied on fell short of meeting the necessary standards for seeking a review. But then there was more drama. In the groundbreaking 2018 Malaysian election, a 92-year-old Mahathir Mohamad led an opposition party to victory, breaking the long-standing rule of the Barisan National Coalition. After Mahathir's appointment as Prime Minister in May 2018, Malaysia surprisingly abandoned efforts to review and interpret the 2008 International Court of Justice's ruling, choosing to accept the court's original verdict. Singapore welcomed Malaysia's decision, seemingly concluding the matter. Malaysia's withdrawal meant forfeiting the opportunity to challenge Singapore's Pedra Branca sovereignty for good. As the court's statute requires a revision application within 10 years of the judgment, and that window had now passed since the ruling on May 23, 2008, but the saga didn't end there. In a startling turn of events in 2022, Malaysian caretaker Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob declared that the Malaysian cabinet had opted to revisit the Pedra Branca issue at the International Court of Justice again. Malaysia hinted at potential negligence by former Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad for not scrutinizing the court's decision as per a special task force's findings. The task force further recommended actions to safeguard Malaysia's sovereignty as well. Singapore swiftly reaffirmed its preparedness to defend Pedra Branca's sovereignty against any legal challenges from Malaysia. The plot thickened when Malaysia's new Prime Minister, Anwar Ibrahim, assumed office in November 2022. His administration, after a thorough review, affirmed that Mahathir's 2018 decision to withdraw from court proceedings was incorrect. During an official visit to Singapore in January 2023, Anwar expressed regret for Mahathir's failure to appeal when Malaysia lost the case. Despite ongoing disagreements about Singapore's sovereignty over Pedra Branca, Anwar stated that Malaysia would respect the court's decision, acknowledging there was no longer any recourse to reclaim the territory. However, Anwar Ibrahim urged Singapore to assess planned reclamation projects around the Pedra Branca area for potential environmental and border-related impacts. In response, Singapore agreed to a temporary pause in all development and reclamation activities near Pedra Branca, aiming to facilitate discussions and address Malaysia's concerns. The lingering question persists. Has the Pedra Branca issue genuinely found resolution, or does it hold more twists and turns in its narrative? 
While it may seem settled on the surface, the intricacies of Singapore-Malaysia dynamics keep the outcome uncertain. However, this is not the only point of contention between these two nations. Did you know that Singapore and Malaysia have a long-standing dispute over the price of water? Watch this video to find out more.